Every troubled time we're first in line This is my family This is our legacy To march in the parade Our heads held high We work in unity For our community We dedicate our lives To fighting fires I want to belong To something big to walk tall and proud in the street I want to turn heads and hear it said There goes a fireman Just like my father and his father before I want to serve, do that little bit more Stand out from the crowd to help my town and be a fire It started with my work as an artist. Um, the work that I've been doing, it, it is about documentation and it's about Vermont and it's about the changing landscape, the people, and a lot of the markets, like the growth in Manchester, Vermont, and how that's changed. And it's, uh, and recording it while it's changing and uh, hopefully recording it before it changes, before buildings get torn down and, and uh, people pass away. And I've done um, a lot of series of buildings uh, in the past that I've exhibited that have uh, uh, had historical importance or just local importance, a place where someone you know goes every day to get their paper or to get their bait when they go fishing or their beer or their cigarettes after work. Uh, so the firehouses are, are fall into these categories. When I heard that they were going up for sale uh, and that who knew, who knew what they were going to you know, be turned into, they built this consolidated fire department where all four companies went into. Four companies are Eagle Hose, uh, which is the only one that's not historic, uh, Putnam Hose Company, Bradford Hook and Ladder, and Stark Hose. So these four pieces will be part of the exhibit, as well as the new firehouse. I will do a piece on that, and also the, uh, some portraits, some sculptures, some uh, maybe a mobile, um, uh, a variety of things will be in, you know, on display. I love old things. Um, I still have all my matchboxes, my Tonka trucks, and, and I like old furniture, and I have, I have old cars, and you know, I have an old truck, and um, these things are important to me. They're uh, a reminder of uh, how well things were built, um, and how strong they were, and how, how beautiful they were in design. And um, I think that that's, I think that all that stuff is, is important to be reminded of. A lot of my work is about is research. I have to gather information, I have to collect things. And, um, and I like to collect things. And uh, so collecting information, talking to people, uh, taking pictures, um, doing sketches, recording, interviewing, these are all, this, these are all ways that I, uh, that I collect information and, and to get the research that I need in order to create a picture. For as long as I've been in, I, we always had red fire trucks. And Back in 83, maybe, we got the first two-tone fire truck in the department. 
It was a red and white one. It was the old Matt Cabo Ranger. Our foreman, then, well, we called him foreman, now they call him captain as lieutenant. It was Abel LeBlanc. And uh, he pushed for that two tone. He wanted a two tone? He wanted that two tone truck. Yep. <laughs> Figure a day if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do it if I'm gonna get into this project. There's a, one way to do it. So uh -huh. they suited me up and uh, I had to get used to the oxygen thing. It was kind of like uh, kind of like going to the dentist and being uh, being under the gas, but uh, a whole different a whole different high when you're up in there. I really trusted these guys. I felt like uh, they wouldn't let anything happen to me, and I was, you know, they were watching my back, and I was watching theirs, and mm -hmm. so I felt safe. Um, it got really hot at one point, and the fire uh, flapped over the ceiling, and uh, everybody just dropped to their knees, mm -hmm. and uh, automatically it was just a instinct. <laughs> <laughs> and um, parts of the ceiling were coming down, the insulation, the sheetrock. It got, it was very messy. Uh, no way could I do any drawing in there. Like, I felt like I was going skydiving into hell. And uh, one of the guys says, yeah, that's right, you are. So that was, that was real reassuring. <laughs> tied into this project, um, which makes it fun. Um, and this is the workshops for the families and the firemen. And these workshops, there'll be three of them, uh, two before the opening and one the day after the opening on Battle Day, uh, the Battle Day Parade in Bennington. And these workshops, I'll have an assistant working with myself and we'll be creating uh, artworks um, around the theme of uh, fire. Taking pictures from your imagination, floating Mother Nature. In general, I, I really like working with um, elderly people and young, and young people and people with problems. For a number of reasons, it, it not only feels good that I feel like I'm helping them somewhat or facilitating uh, some type of a, a good process, the art, the process of making art is fun. Um, but it's also, I love the work that comes out of it and it's very inspiring to me as an artist. I get a lot more inspiration out of seeing the work at the end of the day. Uh, or at the end of the month than I would say if I went down to New York and walked around Soho. person, um, when, I'm, when I'm carving them or making them or, uh, and painting them, they, they, become, they become a little, I talk to them sometimes <laughs> I, when, I'm, when I'm working and uh, they, they come alive from a block of wood to, uh, they grow arms, legs and ears and nose and, and then when I paint them their expression comes on and gives them clothes and they, they come alive. I'm not as concerned with uh, with polish and, and flash and, um, you know, when I nail an arm onto a body, you know, I like showing that the nail shows, even if I paint over it. I'm not worried about using a finished nail and setting the nail in and wood putting over it and sanding it and hiding it. I think I like, one thing I like about what I like to do with my work is to show people how, how it was put together, you know, so again, they can make another connection. They can say, oh yeah, I see how you did that. Yeah, that's neat. Put that, you know, maybe I could do that. It's simple, because it is simple stuff. You know, anybody can do it. Some of my sculptures are, they're products of my collection habits. You know, I have boxes and bins of chains and springs and wires and um, 
little pieces of metal and thin metal and, and rubber and plastic and you know and then when I'm creating like a, like a truck for example you know and I'm doing mud flaps and I'm doing antennas and I'm doing I uh, might want to show a little part of the engine or something inside on the dashboard I'll have all that stuff right there mm -hmm. and I won't have to go out and get it or mm -hmm. uh, and it and all that stuff adds to it I like the assembly too I like putting you know putting trying to figure out how to how to make these uh, hoses and do I wrap silver metal around this or and then I found the silver duct tape which I'm not going to paint I'm just leaving these um, Finding these tubes, these were, it was little PVC pipe that I painted black. Making these ladders for the, uh, for the big fire truck was fun. A lot of this is just building things like how you build a ladder, you know. Um, but then the extension ladders, you know, that slide up, you know, I'm going to make little brackets on them and tie them on. Um, so I think building the pieces, um, painting them is fun too. Painting them is, is a lot of fun because then they really come to life when they're painted. This piece here is uh, Starco's company, and it's one of my favorites, uh, one of my favorite buildings of uh, the firehouses. It's a, a very social place, and that's how they want it to be depicted as, as their piece. They wanted them up there grilling hamburgers and hot dogs and uh, enjoying their favorite beverage and sitting on the bumper of the truck. They were known as the, as the party house, and everybody, all the firemen say this is this is a great depiction of this particular hose company because they they like to party and uh, they had uh, some a lot of good times there so they really enjoy it Bradford is the oldest firehouse it also held the fire alarm headquarters and the chief's quarters up until just a couple of years ago. And they want it to be depicted with a lot of history that they have. There are some beautiful photos with awnings coming off the windows. Um, this project, I, especially with the historical piece, I had to use rely on a lot of historic photographs. And so uh, the ones I had from here were all different periods. Um, I was working from one particular photo uh, with the horse-drawn ladder wagon, and, um, and then came across another photo where it showed this wooden cupola. These guys are not in their uniform, they're in their uniforms, not in their casual clothes. So this was sort of posing like for a parade or something uh, like the firemen would today at the Battle Day Parade. And we'll cut from the host coming in the tree, Captain Walter Smudge, okay? Then we have the cut from home truck. This is a great, a great little building, uh, very much like Starco's, where there's just one bay and, and then an upstairs uh, and Eagle. Uh, but this is a historic building. They were asked how they would like to be depicted and they chose at the time when they had their 1924 um, American La France fire pumper, which now is in the collection of Hemings Motor News and is totally restored, and it's really quite a beauty. Eagle Hose wanted to be depicted as going to a fire, going to a call. Current day, with their, with their truck, which they actually sold recently. And uh, so here they are um, 
A couple of the guys that got to the firehouse first jumped in the truck and are pulling out. A few of the other guys are scrambling around getting their turnout gear. This is the Bennington Fire Department, brand new one, the one that we're in right now. Uh, 1997, they built it to accompany the four Bennington Fire, de fire Departments. Uh, I think it's Stark, Bradford, Eagle. This is an emergency vehicle, a smaller one, and this is Bradford Hook and Ladder. And above them are their company rooms. Each one has their own company room. And we're actually right up in one of these right now. gases from the fire meet the oxygen from the outdoors and comes up the stairs, there's this flash over and the fire races, hits the ceiling and it wants to escape. And we were all kind of clustered at the top of the stairs, we had a fire above us in the attic and we just, everybody just automatically dropped to their knees and the fire just came billowing just right over our heads. It was probably the hottest time I had ever experienced in my life. It's the Tuttle Coal Yard Fire, which happened in February of 1979. 18 inches of snow on the ground, 16 degrees below zero, so it was very, very cold. Um, these th three wooden silos had coal in them um, and they were on fire and their wooden silos that were soaked in creosote so they just they went up really quickly and it was one of the most spectacular fires in Bennington Walter Noyes said. This team here is putting water on these tanks and there were five tanks here and there's another one over here and they had fuel oil they had gasoline and they had kerosene in them, and they were steaming, and the paint was blistering off them. So these guys were putting water on them, and this crew over here was putting water on these guys, just soaking them, because they were so hot and they were so close to the flame. So this sort of backup team approach was pretty amazing. When I am called to duty, God, Wherever flames may rage Give me the strength to save some life Whatever be its age Enable me to be alert To the weakest shouts And quickly and efficiently To put the fire out I want to fill my calling and to give the best in me to guard my every neighbor and protect his property and if according to my fate I am to lose my life Please bless with your protecting hand my family and my wife. I want to be loved than me. I want to walk tall and proud in the street. I want the fireman stand out from the crowd to help my town. Volunteer firemen are uh, their heroes, you know, even before they go out and fight fires, I think. Uh, any volu most volunteers, pretty, pretty incredible. And that's, that's also what part of this project is about too, is just celebrating, you know, the, the volunteer people, emergency volunteer people. Oh, 
John was at the barber shop getting himself a Christmas party dressed up to the brim. Another John was tending bar, you never know where you'll be. At your uncle's wake, for goodness sake, when the bell rings, you flee. Where there's a spark, they say there's a stark, stark host company.